Hi guys, my name is Guru Patik, and today we're going to be reviewing a 2.8k anti mage. Uh, what this guy said in his post is he said, I'm 2.8k, just posted in this subreddit. Uh, I was the anti mage in this game, and I felt I had a very good early and a pretty good bit of mid game. But then I got bursted down every fight and felt very useless. I think I could have had a better item build, and that would have helped me. Alright, so sounds like your early game went pretty well, and we'll see. We'll have to think about your item build. Anti Mage is a hero whose item build is not very flexible. Certain heroes, like SF, you could see a lot of different items, and a lot of those items are okay. But Anti Mage is kind of one of those heroes that's been refined over the years to where it's pretty much Treads, Battle Fury, Vlad's, Manta, every game. And that's kind of the core for Anti Mage. Granted, how you build those items up can make a big difference. So we'll take a look. We'll see how it's going. This is the replay. He's playing as Don Gatto. We'll look at the two different lineups. It looks like a pretty good Anti Mage game, honestly. You've got one major mana void target in the storm as well as one major mana void target in the lena and that's really going to matter in your early mid game because you're going to be looking to these heroes to check their mana pools and based on how much mana they have that'll determine whether or not you want to join fights because anti mage really can't fight very early he's got pretty low starting armor low base hp pretty weak stat gain but if you can jump into a fight and win a big fight with your mana void that looks really good for your lineup it looks like you've got Support CM, either a support Nyx or a support Tide, one of the two. One of them will be offlaning. Maybe they go dual lane offlane together. Not entirely sure. Invoker is most assuredly mid, and you're going to be the safe laner. If we're looking at the opponent's lineup, they've got Storm, who can go in the safe lane, but is most likely mid. Looks like a support Lina. Could be support duo of, of Alk and Lina. But that seems unlikely. I'm not entirely sure who you're going to face in this offlane, to be honest. Might be a dual lane of Alk and Lina. Maybe you'll see Sniper. Maybe you get a Wisp. Really tough to say. I would lean towards seeing a more aggressive dual lane, but we'll find out when you get there. In terms of starting item build, Stout Shield, always really good. Uh, Tangos, as well as a Salve. This is a pretty standard item build with the two GG branches as well. Works pretty well to fill out your inventory. Most of the time I opt away from the two GG branches and I either get another set of tangos if I'm worried about playing against a more aggressive lane or or I'll save the extra gold maybe to get a poor man shield early because you can pick up the poor man shield almost immediately if you get one or two last hits and you save this extra 100 gold. So that's an option, but overall item build looks fine. In terms of late game this game, you guys have pretty good late game, but then again, so do they. So it's when you're playing anti-mage, it's all kind of how quickly you can arrive at the late game. Because most anti-mage games are you farm for the first 15 to 20 minutes. You get kills here and there where you contribute, where you've got big mana void targets. And... You essentially end the game on the back of you being a higher net worth than everyone else on their team, and they just can't deal with you. So in a lot of ways, Anti-Mage shows up for that 1v5. So you could go to scout out the rune. This is good. I like this. And you find yourself with an Alk and a Lina. At this point, you skill blink to get in there and steal the rune. I'm okay with that steal. Hmm. Invoker is dying top. Let's see. I, I mean, that's okay to blink in there and steal the rune. So I think that's an okay skilling of blink. We'll see how the rest of your lane progresses. I might have just walked in and skilled mana break and start hitting the elk. That's another option. But I think what you did there is fine. So here you're a little bit slow to lean, and that costs you two last hits. If you had walked a more direct angle, like if you had walked this way, or you walked, I guess mostly just this way, you would have gotten to lean sooner. But Nyx appears to be your support in lane. CM appears to be in the mid lane. Missed a last hit there. 
That's okay. See how this goes. And I guess it's just Lena off lane. Alk must be stacking ancients. But you're doing a nice job of last hitting right now. You've missed two out of the three here, or out of the five that you've gotten. And that's kind of rough. Now you've missed another one. You've missed three out of six. Like, these creeps are free. You're not being contested. You really want to pick these up. Against Alina in this case, I also would have picked up a poor man's shield really early, as she's just going to smack away at your HP pool from long range. There's not much you can do to avoid that. A sniper TP's down in your lane. Another missed last hit. And so now I would definitely opt towards the poor man's shield. You had luck to go for the Quelling Blade. Quelling Blade's okay. You're going to end up building it into a Battle Fury later, so it's good from that perspective, but Poor Man Shield gives you not only a little bit of extra damage to last hit, but it also gives you that defensive ability. And against two ranged heroes where your support really can't do anything, having a melee support Nyx, I think it's way to your benefit to have that Poor Man Shield. Because if I were these two ranged heroes, the instant you walk into range, I would be last hitting you. And like now you're feeling a little bit scared because there's two ranged heroes to go get last hits. And that's not how you want to feel as an anti-mage. This is good. You sneak up on this and steal this last hit. Double Nyx gets some damage. harass off. Now what you're doing in lane is you're kind of sitting and waiting for these creeps to get low. And then you walk up to get a last hit. That can be okay. But what I would like to see you doing is standing back here with your hero and pulling the wave towards yourself with aggro mechanics. Now, if you don't know how to do this, it's a very simple concept, but the idea is, is when you're standing here and you attack the enemy heroes, creeps within a 500 radius will aggro to you. And so you can use that to your advantage, especially in a lane where they have a stronger lane. So what you do is you stand here, you right click Lena and then you instantly run back towards your base and what happens is, is these three creeps will chase you and what that causes is it causes this thing called splitting the wave where these creeps will go to them and these creeps will come to you and essentially you get unharassed for a couple of last hits whereas this way every time you walk up you're gonna get hit two or three times the other way you're not gonna get hit nearly as often and it's a good way to sustain your regen because, like, right now, Sniper's just hitting you, or he should be. But you're doing okay. You're getting a good amount of last hits. Nyx catches Lena trying to buy her boots, and you get a nice little kill. Lots of attacks off. Alright, that went really well for you. We'll go back, because I want to see this fight again. I'm also gonna turn the volume down a bit. Audio. Okay. So this is good. Lena's caught out of position. She walks around to get her boots. Nyx catches her and you jump onto her. Now at this point, what I'd like to see because you're half HP, you're kind of worried about dying at this point. You can tango in the middle of your fight, and it'll actually regen throughout the fight. And it's an easy way to get, maybe survive that one extra auto attack that Sniper is going to get off on you. You used your blink, your blink's on a 12 second cooldown, you're in a position where you might die. Like, in between auto attacks right here, eat this tree, walk and hit her. Eat this tree, walk and hit her. Eat this tree, walk and hit him. It didn't end up matting, mattering, you ended up winning by one attack on the sniper. But 52 HP, like right now if you had eaten a tango earlier in that fight, your HP would be at 130, 140. You'd have way more HP, way more survivability. Just something to think about. Really nice they gave you a double kill. And I'm, I'm happy that you went the ring of health first here instead of boots. One, because your HP pool was low, but two, because the way Anti-Mage kind of wins his lane in a lot of situations is the supports help him until he gets to a point where he has boots, ring of health, and at that point, Anti-Mage can essentially win the lane by himself, freeing up support movements to move around the map. So this is good. I like that you went ring of health first here. Mm. 
might have been a kill. It's okay, harass. So for that one last hit, you miss two creeps under tower. I, as an anti-mage, most of the time what you want to do is all of your harass, you're either losing or gaining farm off of. And in that situation, it was way more beneficial for you to just hang back. You only got one auto attack off on the sniper. Had you gone boots, maybe, maybe that would have been better. But as is, you traded two last hits, which is about 100 gold for a little bit of harass. I'm okay with that harass, though. Trading one last hit for two auto attacks, that's fine by me. If we're looking at your skill build, so when you're building anti-mage, his skills, you kind of level based on the game, and it can be very different. The players that kind of popularize picking up stats at level 4 are like burning or black. There's really good anti-mage players, and what they do is they go for a value point in blink, value point in mana break, value point in spell shield, and then max stats for that extra HP, extra mana, extra armor, those kinds of things in lane. And this build is honestly fine for this game. As a general rule, you want to have your blink maxed before you finish your battle fury, or as you finish your battle fury. You want to have your mana break max by the time you finished your manta and you want to have spell shield sort of maxed by whenever you feel like you need it if you're in a lane against a bunch of nukers let's say there's a coddle and a lena in your lane which has happened to me before i'll sometimes max spell shield by seven just because i get tired of their nukes and that's completely okay you just kind of max it based on how you feel, and then you always take your ultimate at 6, 11, and 16, because it is your most powerful spell, especially early at getting kills. So we'll see how your skill build ends up being. I like that you've taken the stats here. There's not a lot of nuke potential. Yes, there's Alina, but I don't know if it's justified leveling up your spell shield, and I'm okay with you not maxing Blink for right now. What I would like to see you do is get boots as soon as possible because boots not only allow you to play defensively but also offensively as mana break is one of the best spells for playing offensively missed the last hit here i'm going to be pretty critical of you missing last hits especially free ones and the reason for that is on a hero like anti mage who is designed to scale extremely quickly once he gets his I'm okay with this blink too. That's designed to scale really quickly once he gets his farming item. Those early last hits that are free matter quite a lot. I also would still like to see you get that poor man shield. As you can see, Sniper's just kind of trying to plink away with you. And you have a ring of health. But having that poor man shield will reduce the damage you take by 20, 30, 40 percent. It basically increases the effectiveness of your ring of health in addition to giving you a little bit of extra base damage. CM shows up. Over aggressive dive. Alright, that's not worth it. We'll go back and talk about this. So one of the things I see with anti-mage players, and maybe this situation isn't the best to demonstrate it, but most anti-mages just kind of sit and they want to farm in lane, and that's not actually the strength of anti-mage. The strength of anti-mage is that when left alone in lane in 1v1 situation, you just go trade hits with this guy. Granted, he's pretty close to his tower range. You could stand here and be hitting him. And the advantage of that is you have a ring of health, you have regen in your lane, whereas they do not. And you're also burning their mana, so you're burning their effectiveness. Like, I'd like to see you play aggressive when these last hits aren't available, to the point where you're trying to zone him almost out of lane, and then come back for the last hits. You also have to think about your place in the game when you're going for these kills, and whether or not it's worth dying. Right here is a decision point. There's a TP coming in. You should know that's Lena if you, uh, because of the color corresponds to Lena. You should also, I mean, you can also like set your mini map to be faces of people. But in your position in the game right now, you're two and zero. Oh. You're probably the most farmed hero in the game because of those two kills. You're out leveling the other guys on the other team. Lena's level four. Sniper's also level four. It is 
not worth dying to kill this sniper. Because what's going to happen is you're essentially just going to feed whoever shows up here a ton of levels in gold. And that'll make your lane infinitely harder. So at this point, I would just back. You've got a little bit of tunnel vision on killing this sniper, and it's not worth it. If we look at this Lena now, right? Lena just got basically an entire level of experience. She was at the beginning of level 4. We'll go back and take a look exactly where she was. Yeah, just hit level 4, and your death essentially gives her almost three quarters of a level of experience. Like That's not what you want to see. Your goal as an early game carry is to stay alive and to get kills when they're given to you and not die, right? The other thing that happened when you died is you lost your gold. So you're at 1100 gold and then you drop down 150. Because in the early game, most of your gold is unreliable, considering you get most of it from your last hits. So you're liable to lose more gold early, simply because most of your gold incomes comes from those last hits. So, not exactly worth it. Yes, you get a kill, but I still wouldn't have done it. So, TP back to lane, that's good. This is part of the reason why I don't like the GG branches. So you just end up getting rid of them, because you need the item slots. So that's kind of why I prefer not getting them at the start and getting a poor man's shield or, you know, faster ring of health, faster boots, depending on what the lane is. But overall, you're doing pretty well right now. Right now, an important thing about AM is you want to keep lane equilibrium more towards your tower. And this is good because the wave is pushing into you right now. You could have denied that. And you kind of want to keep the lane right here. And the advantage of keeping the lane right here is that, especially with boots, if a hero shows, you just blink on them and start beating on them. And you force them back. It's kind of a situation where you can play extremely aggressively. Nice, you're hitting the range creep, trying to even out the lane equilibrium. Nyx goes on sniper. Misuse your blink a bit there. See how far you chase. Yeah, you could have gotten the kill there, so that's good. So you missed quite a lot of farm for that kill. Let's go back and look at it. Good equaling out of the lane. Like, as Nyx is moving around on this sniper and he's kind of making that play to get behind him, I'd like to see you just blink aggressively on him. Like, even, like, you kill this range creep to even out your wave a bit, and then now blink instantly on him. Right? Because you see Nyx coming. You're a bit unsure about where to blink. You chose to blink sort of nearby your Nyx, which led to you getting double stunned. Less than ideal. And probably is the reason that Nyx got killed, because you didn't do as much damage as you could quickly enough. But this is good. You're hitting the Lena. You're getting back to the lane, and because you evened out the lane before you left, the lane returns back to this equilibrium. Now if we look at this lane, this lane is pushing away from you, so I would be aggressively denying right now. Like, denying both of these creeps the instant they get below half health to keep the lane here. By pushing it, you're basically putting the enemy in a situation where they can farm safely. And by now you've lost the lane equilibrium because you chose not to deny. So you've got two range creeps, you're going to push into their tower, you're going to give away free experience, and the reason I call it free experience is that when the lane is down here, you can blink and play aggressively and get kills. When they're under their tower, it's a little bit more difficult because you're going to take the tagger, tower aggro and take a lot of damage from the tower. So this is a pretty big mistake, honestly. And... You know, if I were to do this in my games, I would consider it a lost lane at that point. If I'm pushing a lane that I shouldn't be, because I'm just feeding away two, three, maybe four waves of experience. Now, the way you salvage this lane, a wave that's pushing like this, is you pull. So, like, right now, I would be talking to my supports, and I would say, pull this wave, deny this experience, so that I can get the lane equilibrium back to where I want it. 
and that would kind of be the place. The advantage of anti-mage in some ways is that you can actually do this. If you push this wave out really fast and then blink back, you can actually pull the wave on your own. And if you watch Arteezy in particular, he likes playing a lot of anti-mage currently. If you go watch him in particular, you'll see that he creep pulls as anti-mage probably five to six times in the first 12 to 15 minutes. Like that's not only a support role, that is also a core role. It is a role that helps you to win your lane, to secure more farm, to do those kinds of things. So don't be afraid to do those things as an anti-mage. Okay, more last hitting. You missed this one because of the catapult. But overall doing okay. Lena shows up, nukes down the wave. She fixes your equilibrium, which is nice of her. You're still pushing, and like that ocean of attacking as well as tanking those creeps pushes it even more. Like right now, telling your CM to pull. CM should be pulling this wave 100% and then eating this tree and pulling here. It's getting more experience for your team and also denying experience from the Lena. As is, you're just going to be farming in a really dangerous place which is right under their tower, and you can't even harass this Lena. Like, if this wave is back here, you can just blink on her, start hitting her, force her into a bad situation, essentially, rather than giving her free experience, free farm. Again, given the situation to pull back the wave, chose not to push into it. Just, like, this is a mistake that... <sighs> This is something that actually helped me get from like 4.5k to 5k was understanding creep equilibrium and using it to my advantage. So it's a skill that's a little bit above your MMR bracket right now, but I'm telling you if you learn to do this and learn to do it well, it'll really really help you. So now Wisp shows up, they start doing a lot of damage. At this point, a lot of anti-mages rely simply on the ring of health for the regen. And I can understand why. I mean, it's 5 per second and it's cheaper that way. But at this point, at half HP, I would be kind of scared to contest these two in lane. You might just want to ferry out a set of tangos to yourself right now. Like, it's a bit unusual, but actually pretty common to have extra regen on top of your ring of health. Because Wisp didn't TP down here to just say, hey, how's it going? And then buzz off. Wisp TP down here to kill you. Mana Void, get Labuni Blade. Pretty bad play. Again, this comes back to not understanding why Wisp is in your lane. Wisp does not show up to say, hey, let's farm in the Anti-Mage's lane. It's, hey, let's kill the Anti-Mage. And this blink is good, but going back in, not the right play. If we're looking at your skill build, it looks like you've taken three levels of stats as well as two in blink and you're starting to max blink which is good because you're getting close to finishing your battle fury again dying is the biggest issue in the early game if we look at how much gold you lost there let's take a look so you didn't lose that much gold you lost about 250 gold now ah, 200 gold but what you lost in addition to that gold was 40 seconds of farming, which is a huge, huge deal on Anti-Mage. Like, what I would have liked to have seen is both of these two show up in your lane. You just blink away and start farming this small camp or pulling this wave or farming this camp up here. Like, that's how you play as an Anti-Mage. If they show up to your lane, you just go jungle. The other way you could play is you're kind of rushing Battle Fury, and maybe that's because you had a really good game at the beginning tons of fighting in your lane. But I think if you're going to have these highly aggressive lanes against you, it's better to go treads and poor man shield as well as even a magic stick as it gives you a ton more survivability and fighting ability rather than buying this claymore. Okay, this is something that's really common in AM games too, is that the other team says, oh my god, there's an AM in their team, we've got to gank him. And so right around 8 to 12 minutes, somewhere in that range, depending on when other heroes feel comfortable, they start showing up in your lane like, oh, we got to shut down this AM. 
and you can understand their thinking. Like their thinking is very logical. This hero that farms really well but is weak in the early laning stage, we've got to capitalize on that early. And so oftentimes your lane will be just be tons and tons of farming. Or tons of tons of fighting, I mean, in the 10 to 12 minute range. Okay, here. And the way you deal with that, the way you deal with people coming to your lane with fight, are either retreat to your jungle and farm, TP to the opposite map and farm, or go to the mid lane even, like that can be okay. One thing uh, that I'd like to see from you here, and I'm going to switch this to free camera, it's good that you're checking out what's going on in the top lane. I like that. But I think it's a mistake here to TP out to lane. And the reason I think that is that as an anti-mage, a TP is one of your best uses. So right now, I know you're watching top lane. But if we look at your HP, your HP is almost full. Like, I would like to see you blink out towards your lane and click your hero walking this direction as you're watching this team fight. Because you're wasting regen. You're essentially wasting 5, 6, 7 seconds in the base waiting for your TP to come off of cooldown. The cooldown's a little off, and that's just because of replays are weird like that. But as an anti-mage, part of the reason I want to save your TP is if, let's say, Lena comes to gank you or Alk comes to gank you, Alk's the one you're probably most worried about, maybe Storm, uh, you can blink into the trees and just TP. And that's like your best defensive maneuver. If you use your TP to get out to lane, and you're not really gaining anything by TPing out here now, then you don't have that defensive option. Alright, let's keep going. But overall, we'll take a look at the state of the game, see how it's going. So as you're walking out to lane, you're off to a really good start. You've gotten a lot of kills. Some of that's because, mostly because of misplays by them. They've tried to play aggressive on you and it hasn't worked. Let's pause it. And that's kind of the reason why your net worth is so high. Like, 51 CS, don't get me wrong, that's okay at this point, especially against a dual lane. But you're really looking for the 70, 80, those, those kinds of CS numbers as an anti-mage in the first 10 minutes. And 70 CS is a lot of CS, and the way you get that extra CS is by pushing the wave and farming the jungle, and by pushing and pulling your creeps and farming the jungle. Like, that's the best way to get that kind of farm. I also kind of disagree with your item build. I think it should have been more fighting oriented, like magic stick, treads, poor man shield. But I think this build will benefit you more at the 15 minute mark when you finish your battle fury. Whereas the other build would have benefited you more in the, you know, 6 to 12 minute mark. Uh, in terms of how other lanes are going, it looks like your Invoker is doing okay, he's even in score. Your Tidehunter is dying a lot in the off lane, which, seems to, which signals to me that the other carry is going to have a lot of farm, meaning you're going to have to play a pretty good game. You also have two deaths on Nyx, but his two deaths set up your kills, so I'm kind of okay with his deaths. And CM has one death and has been in your lane a little bit, but she's kind of roaming around the map farming, doing her own thing. In terms of levels, you're doing really well, you're ahead in the game, and I think this is set up to be a good game where you can own at this point. We'll keep going. You see Storm shows up to your lane. I understand he's a bit scary, but at this point, I would just walk up and start hitting him. And the reason for that is you see two heroes here in lane, one of them being Sniper, one of them being Lena. And so the two missing heroes are Alk, Alk who's likely to be in the jungle, and Io, who's likely to be sitting behind her two other supports. Like, if you, you want to bully people out of your lane, and you, the reason you want to bully people out of your lane is you have regen, and they usually don't. And that's kind of the point and the purpose of anti-mage, is people leave them alone, and then when they do show up, they show up in two, three, four, five, or six heroes. Six heroes. They show up as groups of two or three, because they can't show up as one. And so anytime anyone shows up to lane, you kind of back, assess the situation, how many people are there. And if there's only one, then you go pressure them out of the lane. 
But Storm ends up leaving, and now you're back to farming. At this point in the game, as you can see on the minimap, Storm is fighting Nyx. Nyx misses his stun. I'd like to see you click on the Storm and see what his mana pool is there. But it ends out working okay. You heard him use a lot of spells, so it's likely he's low mana. Nyx also used a mana burn. So, but, like, as an important thing about Anti-Mage is it takes a quarter of a second to just click on the hero and see how much mana they have. And then if your hero is hotkeyed, like for me, my hero is hotkeyed to one. So I just click on their hero and I press one and I'm instantly back in control of my hero. Small thing, but in the late game it can matter quite a lot as determining whether or not you want to mana void a target or not. So back to farming, you're into maintaining your equilibrium right now. This is okay, but you're approaching your battle fury at this point, and you know a lot of kills are happening in other lanes. I would be defaulting to push farming right now, especially with my battle fury almost done. Like if you kill these creeps, your battle fury is done. It's out on the courier. You can transition into the jungle and start farming. Granted, sometimes you want treads before that. So this is good. Wave is pushing now. I don't know if you did that intentionally, but that's what you want to be doing, especially after finishing Battle Fury. So next goal is to complete treads. Main reason you go treads with Battle Fury is the attack speed. You want to be hitting as often as possible. This is good. Walk up, kill the range creep first. Push the wave. Opens up time to go into the jungle. Not missing last hits. Good. And now, right here, you're aggressively pushing under the tower. There's actually no reason to go push under the tower like this. Now, I this this kind of goes back to maximizing your own farm. Maybe getting some tower damage is okay. But currently, I guess you see three heroes on the map. So this is fine. Pushing the tower is okay. If you wanted to maximize your farm, though, as opposed to do team-oriented things, I would call this a team-oriented activity pushing the bottom tower. You would simply just go farm jungle immediately and then your wave dies under the tower and you come back. It's it's the pattern of farming is very triangular, so I just call it triangular farming where you push one wave, you go kill a creep camp. Then you go back, you push the next wave, you go kill another creep camp. Go push the wave, kill a creep camp. Push the wave, kill a creep camp. Push the wave, kill a creep camp. And that's how a lot of cores especially uh, especially carries gets those super high numbers at 20 minutes. They're killing not only all four creeps in a wave, but they're getting four or five, six neutral creeps for every 30 seconds. So that's how you're getting tons and tons of last hits. And most of the time you're not missing, you may miss one creep pushing into the tower, but oftentimes you don't miss any. With a hero like Anti-Mage, especially with that blink, you're going to want to be using it back and forth as much as possible. Like, this is okay, farm this camp, get out before the timer so that you stack it. And here I'd like to see you return back to lane, as opposed to farm in the jungle. You see two heroes on the map, three heroes on the map. So this lane is now safe, and your movements are a little bit inefficient. You're not pressuring this bottom tower as much as you could be. You buy your treads, which is good. And then you're going for Vlad's next farming the jungle. This pattern is fine, but it's not as efficient as it could be. Lane creeps give way more experience and way more gold. And you missed a wave of lane creeps to do jungle that's kind of always going to be there no matter what. And doesn't give quite as much gold, doesn't heal, like is more difficult on your HP pool. I would be sending these treads out to me. The courier is in base, so you make use of the courier because treads drastically increase your farming speed. <sighs> Another thing about this game is that as an anti-mage most of the time you're not looking to join fights especially until you finish your manta but because you have two main mana void targets this game I would make sure to have a TP scroll in my inventory and when my team is farming, like, when my team is fighting, I would be up here clicking. Like, how much mana did they use? Click on this storm. He's completely out of mana. Like, if you TP'd right now and just 
jumped in and mana voided this guy, it's like almost a triple kill for you. Right? This is being a little bit too focused on the farm. And granted, it's really easy to get focused on the farm as an anti-mage, because that's what you're supposed to do. But in this mid-game, what you're doing is you're farming, in addition to watching fights that break out close to towers that you can join instantly with a TP. Like, look at this. No mana. Look at this. He's He still has some mana, so that's not a huge target. But Alk's not very low either, so it's mostly this storm that you're looking for. Granted, Lina's here too. But you, so you have to be careful about how you position your blink. But if you blink right here, use the max range of mana void, easy, easy kill. May, may, I mean, you'll definitely kill this guy. Maybe you'll kill this guy. And then you can kind of peace out and go farm ancients, farm the jungle, farm your way back to your lane. You're kind of leaving your team out to dry right now. And Invoker pings you. It's kind of like the same thing. Or he's saying space for any mage. One of the two. Now maybe it's a little bit unsafe to go for that, but that's kind of the like the strengths of anti mage are that he's extremely strong in lane in a one v one situation because of mana break, and he can just show up and wipe your team if you have a mana void target. And storm is one of the bi the biggest mana void targets. He missed the tower there because of siege creep. All right, this is how to last hit a glyph tower is a nice little skill. What you can do is as you're standing next to this tower is stand in range like you were going to hit it and you click the tower. And by clicking the tower you can actually see the duration left on Glyph of Fortification. Glyph lasts for five seconds. And so if you look at this little dial it basically tells you how far into the five seconds you are. Like for example right now there's about two seconds left. And so what you do is you click this, then you take control of your hero again, and you wait two seconds and time your auto attack to hit after two seconds. Granted, it has enough HP that it may not die to one of your right clicks. Oh, it'll definitely die to one of your right clicks. Never mind. But that's how you last hit a glyph tower. You know, it's a small thing, but the difference is three or four hundred extra gold for you, that's a little bit earlier of lads. Again, send out your items. Items not on not on your body are not doing anything. Storm shows up to your lane to gank you. I'm o I'm okay with you farming right here. If Storm had continued pursuing, I would have backed. But this is fine. Okay, you finally got your treads. Now you can start tread swapping. Back to agility. Let's see how you do it. Okay, swap to intelligence. You didn't swap to intelligence there. Yeah, you're not going to tread swap at all. Uh, biggest reason to buy the treads on anti mage is to tread swap. And you can open up a custom game and practice this if you want to, but the amount of time you can spend in the jungle is like five or six minutes longer if you're tread swapping. You also will have mana for your ultimate most of the time, so I, I would highly recommend tread swapping. It's good that you have a maxed blink though. Really nice, you walk up and kill Storm. Did you look at his mana pool first? No. You just assumed. So assuming can get you into some bad situations sometimes. Maybe your teammate told you that he was really low. Something like that. But just click and look. It doesn't hurt. It takes a quarter of a second. And you're ensuring that your mana void hits a good target. Like, see, now tread swapping becomes extremely relevant because you're going to be regening all the time. Team's continuing to fight. It's good that you're watching. But you don't have your mana void. You're not looking to join. Here's kind of a mistake in map movement, I think personally. Like, your whole team is here, and you're sitting up here farming the Ancients. I think at this point, you just blink up. You can either blink to here, or blink up here and walk up into their jungle and start farming there. Or you can blink up here, walk into lane, and start farming here. Like, part of why you want to play anti-mage is that you can farm in dangerous positions on the map that other heroes cannot 
granted, you really want a TP to be able to do that. So maybe going back to your jungle is okay from that standpoint. But as you can tell, they're crawling all over your mid lane. You kind of want to be on the opposite side of the map. Here, more fighting. You get a nice pick off on Sniper. They don't kill you. You're stuck in the trees because of a bad blink. Don't forget the Quelling Blade. So, this was a nice change actually in the patch. Mana Void comes up. What healed them all? Must have been a stick. Really, really nice. You played really aggressive there. So we'll go back. When you blink into the trees here, you can use this as a calling blade to get you out. This is nice. You blink in, you mana void storm. You've seen he use a lot of spells. You again didn't click on him, so you didn't know how much mana was missing. And here you blink in to try and kill the Lina, and your regen on Vlad saves you. So, fantastic. Like, that fight is one of those kinds of fights that sets you up to win the game. Here you go ahead and b start to buy your Manta style. I like that you're staying out on the map rather than going home. And here you join again, get another kill. Really, really good. Like, you just, your net worth skyrocketed during that fight. That's just showing the Alk dying and the Nyx, I guess. But I would stand to say that you gained 3 to 4k net worth on that fight. And now they're dead, you're pushing their tower. I, you stayed a little too long at this tower. So much fighting. Anti-mages don't fight this much usually. And the reason is, is they have too low an HP pool. I understand you want to help your team, but you don't help your team as an anti-mage by fighting early. You help your team by farming. Like, you've lost 60 seconds of farming basically with trying to help your team there, as well as losing this tier 1. So you could have just pressured this tier 1, and as Storm starts to TP in, we'll go back to that point. Like, before Storm TPs in to pull you, I would be t blinking up here, and I would start farming a rotation in their jungle. Like, that would be my play. You could either go to this camp, you could go to this camp, anything in here, you could backdoor one of these waves. Something that's really helpful for backdooring these waves is that in order to know where they are on the map, you just look at the creeps on your map. So I obviously can't see this top lane, but I see that my creeps are right here on the map. And so it stands to reason that on the opposite side of the map, their creeps will be in about the same position. So I'll unpause it and switch it to free camera. And we'll check, see how their creeps are right there. That's a really easy way to see creeps, and as an anti-mage, like, backdooring creeps is often a really efficient way of getting farm. Say you're farming here, and the time is 46 seconds, which usually corresponds to creeps being here. You just blink up here, farm this way, blink down, and start farming this jungle. Or those kinds of movements. And it's a movement that I don't really see very often in lower skill backets, but it's really common in mine. So we'll keep going. And the anti-mage continues to farm. Like, you only have a thousand HP. Like, you are extremely weak. Two to three nukes can kill you. You, As an anti-mage, you really want to crush people under your net worth. Rather than try to fight early with all these items that aren't fighting items. I also kind of disagree with keeping your treads on agility during fights. You do not really need extra damage. Right, you already hit for 180 damage plus the mana break, which is an additional 40 to 50 damage, as well as the mana burn effect. Like, don't... the health is more important than the extra 8 to 10 damage that you get from having this on agility. Like, that's 190 health. can make a big difference. It's a little lower than that. It's 171. But you're checking out people's items. Storm's going for Orchid, so you want to finish your Manta before that happens. Lena, I'm pretty sure, has Yules because she's used it on you. And I think you saw it when you were clicking on her items. 
here you come back to life and now it's kind of a decision of where do I want to go to farm and this decision can be a little difficult uh, you kind of want to consider what heroes can kill me on their team and currently the composition of heroes that can kill them on your team or kill you on their team are Lena with Yules which she has and that's pretty much it storm plus one can kill you but it's a bit of a dangerous gank here you TP bottom to try and contest this Alk I guess like again I'd like to see you farming when you're sitting back here in base and you see one hero showing bottom Alk who hasn't shown pretty much at all he's he could be alone but his team is likely to be with him pushing and farming I would have liked to have seen you go top and pressure this lane by yourself and take advantage of the fact that nobody is in their jungle farming like AM's not a fighter at this stage of the game you blink out and you die you just don't have the HP pool to be fighting at this stage. Like, given the amount of farm that you had in the early game, the usual timings for AM, let's say he's in complete free farm, so you versus no one, like you're in your own private lobby, you should hit Battle Fury treads at about minute 14. Then at about minute 16 to 17, you'll have your Vlads finished, and at minute 20, you should have your Manta. Like, that's the, like, perfect free farm isolation kind of game. But you have a couple of advantages because you've gotten a lot of kills this game. Granted, you've had a couple of deaths as well. But I think right now you should have most of your mana manta complete, if not fully completed. But you're spending a lot of this 15 to 20 minutes fighting with a hero that's not designed to fight during that window. If you want to fight more often in that window, pick a carry that's peaks more in that range. More like a gyro, more like a luna, more like a slark. And build an item set that reflects that. This item set that you're going with anti-mage is a very much a solo, I'm gonna farm and gear up for the late game and I'll be there before the rest of you get there. As opposed to slark with like drums, Sanj and Yasha, or shadow blade, or a, you know, a gyro with drums, that kind of thing. This is just not understanding AM's play style and what he's meant to do. Granted, take free kills when you can get them. Like, you want to help your team by showing up, man avoiding a target, killing that target, and then going back to farming. Farming is your main priority on this hero. Being dead is not. Like, you've spent probably about four to five minutes of this game dead. And that's, like, on a hero that can get 800, 900 GPM with just a Battle Fury and a Treads, like, you're basically giving up on 3,600 net worth by being dead for that long. And here, your vision is very focused on how the fight is going. I'm okay with that, especially because you're dead, you're helping your team out. But they're just trying to 5-man you. And there's two ways to deal with teams that 5-man. The first one is to fight them. So you could just fight them and kill them and they'll stop 5 manning. The other way is to split push them to the point where they're like, hey, we could push this tower, but meanwhile anti-mage is taking our top tier 2. You force one of them back or two of them back to defend that tower, and when they go back, you engage in the fight. Here you're engaging, misclick your mana void. I think it would have killed Storm if you didn't. Let's take a look. Player perspective. Yeah, you definitely would have killed Storm. He has like nothing. Might have like team wiped him too, honestly. So misclick again. Not the best, but it's it happens. Misclicks happen. Again, it's also kind of a decision of why are you TPing in there to fight by yourself? sort of thing. Like, go top, go deal with the Lena by yourself, go push mid, that kind of thing. This last three or four minutes, you fed away a huge amount of your advantage. Like, we'll go back and we'll look at, we can look at the graphs if you want to. They're kind of ahead because of the way that Alk looks. But, 
three or four minutes ago, your net worth was extremely high relative to the other team. A second. Keep it on player perspective, I guess. We'll pause it. So we're currently at 2237. We'll go back sort of before all this fighting happened. Like, look at your net worth. 10k. And then 2130 or 2037. Same net worth. One minute later, like, same net worth. In three to four minutes, your net worth has not changed at all. And as an anti-mage, that is absolutely terrible. You can see, like, your net worth hasn't changed and all of theirs have skyrocketed up. That's not what you want to see. Like, you could have had four or five K extra gold instead of, like, trying to do these losing fights. In a lot of ways, you've kind of thrown away your game just by abandoning the game plan that you set out to originally play. I understand that you want to help your team, that you don't want to leave your team out to try, but oftentimes, as a carry, you have to decide whether helping your team is the most important factor to winning the game. And in this game, the most impact important factor to winning the game is you getting massive and your team not feeding to the so that you can basically go in and 1v5 them with the support of your team. Like, they can't kill you, they can't do anything. Lena gets picked off top. It's good. Good play by Invoker. But this is really troubling. Four or five minutes, no net worth change. Yeah, they're running around taking objectives, but instead of trying to contest the objectives, AM is one who tries to trade objectives because you use the farm better than they do and you can push faster by yourself than they can push often as five like they don't have great pushing heroes like Alk's pretty good Sniper's also pretty good but they don't have a Prophet they don't have a Necro book they don't have a Lycan like who just eats towers like you are a hero that eats towers not only because of the damage that your hero does but Vlad's the biggest reason anti-mages pick up Vlad's is, well, the lifesteal is nice, the mana regen is also nice, but it increases your push potential significantly. This is also a situation where understanding the game, right, like you pinged Roche, so you knew they were Roshing, you should be pushing this tower. You want to be trying to trade objectives. Granted, this maximizes your farm, so it can be okay. But that was, you probably could have killed this tower. Whereas now, because you weren't hitting that tower, oftentimes what you'll see is a glyph and three TPs. And you're put in this tough situation. Do I stay around and risk dying to get a last hit on a tower? Or do I, or do I just back and give up the tower deny? And that's not an easy situation to be in. I think most... Most carries would default to just giving away the tower deny, but why give away a tower that you don't need to? Granted, they decided not to, but like, we'll go back and we'll look because I want to see if they have glyph or not. Like, they have glyph. They could TP in. Like, Sniper's got a TP. Lena's got a TP. Storm does not, so that's a big problem. Storm should have a TP. But like, right now, if Lena TPs in instantly, and they glyph this tower, and Storm TPs in right afterward, you're, you're giving up a tower deny, because you chose to farm these two camps knowing that they were probably Roshan. That's a strategical thing, and you can't always know for sure, and I can kinda, I have benefit of the doubt in the sense that I know 100% for sure that they were Roshan. So it ends up being a misplay. Here, again, you come back too soon. Like, your team does not want to fight into a team with Aegis. Like, your play right now, you should be hitting this tower. And you should be saying, defend with spells, do as best you can, I'll show up if they dive. Like, that's the game plan that you're working for right now. Who picked up the Aegis, by the way? Lena? Storm? Alk. Okay, Alk has the Aegis. You also kind of want to keep track of that. But, like, you could be hitting this tower for free. They are sitting all five mid. They're all standing in vision. Like, you know they're here. You standing here is accomplishing nothing. Whereas, if you were hitting this tower, it would accomplish a lot more. 
Really good initiation by Tide. Like, you commit yourself to fighting by TPing back here. And the fight went well for you guys, so that's good. Breaks his home tether. Blink a little out of position. Alright, so a really good fight for you. Just gonna keep going back. So you TP'd back. You TP'd back at 2020. And you kind of sit around a bit. You're waiting for your team to get an initiation. And we'll see what, like, how many seconds you missed out on farming and pushing. Because it's around 30 seconds. Like, you're just sitting in base. These 30 seconds, you're doing absolutely nothing. All right. Fight breaks out at 52. Like, as Nyx is about to go in, right, you, he should be telling you, like, tell me when you're about to engage. And at that point, you start TPing in. So, like, as Nyx runs in with his invis, you TP in. And then you're here at the fight as instantly as you could have been, as well as applying pressure and farming up top. The fight goes really well for you. You pick off the Alk, who had his ultimate up. Then you're cleaning up the backline heroes instead of trying to fight the Alk. That's also really good. It's good that you targeted down Storm first. Storm was really out of position. I think most fights, you're going to want to kill Lina first or Storm. You kind of kill Lina first. That's like the hero you target. Lino or Io because they're weak and they just die to a Blink, Manta, uh, and a couple of attacks. And then you kind of wait for Storm to use some of his mana and, manta him, and then just mana void him. But the way you played it was a good fight. It's all fine. Here, good understanding. Ta tier 1 towers don't have backdoor protection. At all. So you can just hit them. Like... Okay, this is just bad. Okay, Storm TP's in. Storm has Orchid, so he's a bit scary. I like that you're playing aggressive on him. Four of his other heroes are dead. So it's unlikely that he's going to try to kill you. But the instant they buy back, especially on Lina, Lina's TPing in to kill you. Right? You've got two TPs now that are showing up. Just leave Tide for dead. As an anti-mage, like, you kill Storm with your mana void, but Storm, you can't really hit Storm very well, especially if he's a good Storm. Because he's just going to jump to positions that are just out of your attack range. And if you blink in and you maybe get one or two attacks off, he'll just zip away again. Especially if he's using his mana pool properly. Nyx could have killed him there by mana voiding, or by nuking him for his mana burn too. So that's kind of a mistake by Nyx. But like you don't want to be chasing around a hero that can infinitely jump away from you. That's not that's not your playstyle. Your playstyle is stay alive, farm, get a bunch of items, win the game on the back of those items. Like trying to chase a hero that you're just gonna chase forever doesn't work out. How did he end up dying? Oh, the sun strike. But again, like, we're looking at your net worth. Your net worth changed quite a bit from that ultra kill. But again, 70 minutes dead, like, or 70 seconds dead, 70 minutes, guys. <laughs> you lose the game instantly. <laughs> like, you don't even have your Manta ferried out to you. Like, I think, if we take a look at the state of the game, right, you've got a lot of kills. It's really good. Your team has a lot of deaths. They've got three, ten deaths on Tide, nine deaths on Nyx, seven deaths on CM, 
six on Invoker. So a lot of your team is is feeding, and I think you look at this scoreboard and you say like, oh, I'm carrying so hard, but my teammates just suck. I just can't win with with them. But as an anti mage, like you, they sacrificed a lot to get you a lot of farm early, and you have to repay them by having a lot of farm in the late game and sort of panning out that strategy. And I think you've devoted yourself too much to fighting and you've died too many times to justify the amount of space that they tried to create for you. Like, I'm sure it feels like you couldn't have done more to win this game, but I think if you had just spent a little bit more time farming and had a little bit better decision making about which fights to join and which fights not to join and using your TP scrolls a bit more effectively and not wasting time, you easily could have had like 7 or 8k more net worth and just be absolutely crushing this game. Alright, other things that we're worried about in this game, an important thing to think about when you play a highly mobile hero is what heroes can kill me. And currently, we were scared of the Lena with their Yules. We've seen that Storm's picked up Orchid, but we have our Manta style finished. We don't have it in inventory yet. So we're not as scared of that. But Lena is kind of the biggest scary one. We don't really care about Sniper. It's no way to lock us down. IO as well, no way to lock us down. And Alk's a bit scary, but he didn't go for an initiation type build, at least that I think. You haven't clicked on him for a while. Uh, he didn't go like a Shadow Blade or a Blink Dagger or those kinds of catch type items. So I think you're mostly worried about the movements of Lena and Storm. Like, when you're choosing to fight when you don't have your Manta style, your team has to fight with you to support you. And a lot of times they're just gonna die. Voker uses his combo on Alk, even though it won't kill him. It's kind of a mistake. You're forced to buy back. Let's see. Good kill on Alk. How much longer did you have on your timer? 25 seconds. This is an okay buyback. It does save your racks. You TP in and blink out. It's kind of weird. Just TP to like a safer location. Here you didn't use your Manta. Like when you start hitting that Alk and he like starts to attack you, you want to use your Manta. Because then he's got to guess the right illusion. You can also defend your base there in that situation by TPing here, mantaing, and then just sending your illusions in. Kind of hanging back with your hero, that's really defensive. The more offensive way is to blink in and then manta, which I think you would have been fine to do there. <laughs> Especially because there wasn't enough kill potential, there's just sniper and IO, which isn't a ton of damage, but it's a fair mid, especially if Alk is hitting you. Fortunately, you have to buy back. It's okay. You much rather would have not have, but Invoker are kind of overcommitted, and I think they would have taken your racks had you not bought back there. So I. I <coughs> okay, buy back. Alright, now your next item you're considering is BKB. When we're thinking about BKB this game, I really don't agree. And the reason I don't agree is it. Like, BKB is used to block specific spells. And I think the spells that BKB blocks this game that are relevant are Lena's stun and maybe Storm's pull. You gonna kill this sniper? Yeah, that's an overcommitment. Okay. We'll go back. I'm gonna talk about BKB first, and then we'll talk about this fight. So the spells that you're committing yourself to bo to pull, bleh. the spells that you're blocking this game are mostly just LSA and Storm Pull. Those are the two you really care about. It does block Alk's stun, but it doesn't actually block the damage from Alk's stun because Alk's stun is physical damage. So you can still take that damage even though you're BKB'd. Weird mechanic. It's how it is. Ice Frog, please. 
So I guess it's okay for blocking those two stuns, but I think what you much rather would want to do would be to itemize against physical damage, because Sniper has Deso, for example, Alk is a lot of physical damage, Lena has pure damage with her nuke, so like you definitely want some kind of HP against that. Uh, IO doesn't really contribute in terms of damage to you, some magic, but not very much. And then Storm is a lot of magic damage, but he's also a heavy physical damage. He's like 50-50, like 50-50 physical, magical. And as you get later into the game, his right clicks matter more. So what I'm seeing is three heroes that are heavily dependent on physical damage to kill you, as well as an IO that doesn't really contribute to your damage, and then a pure damage nuke. So at this point, like, the items that help you with that are, one, keeping your strength treads up. That's really important. The The other item you can go is for raw HP. Heart's really good. Butterfly is arguably the best anti-physical damage item, especially if they don't have MKB. If they have MKB, though, AC is also really good. I've seen a lot of anti-mages who go AC instead of Butterfly, anticipating that the other team will build MKB. So I'd much rather see those kinds of items rather than BKB, because the disables aren't something you're super concerned about. You've got Manta for Orchid. You can even Manta dodge Lena's stun if you need to. Like I feel like those are the better items. The other item that to consider is Abyssal Blade, and that's much more of a solo pickoff kind of item. So if you were playing this game more like I would prefer you did, which is more split pushing, joining your team with TPs after Nyx or Tide is initiated, then I the Abyssal would also be a good purchase, as it gives you a way to lock down Storm, lock down Sniper, lock down any hero who's off by themselves defending against you and kill them. Alright, here you come up in D Ward. You didn't actually have to blink up here to D Ward. Like, this is a waste of efficiency. This is not understanding that you can just use the Battle Fury Quelling Blade to kill it. Like, blink over here, and then Battle Fury Quelling Blade kill this ward, farm this camp. Minor thing. Next, what happens is you see a hero mid. Nyx is pinging, hey, let's go kill this sniper. Right? At this point, you blink in instantly and kind of give away that you're there. I would much rather see you walk down the side and wait for Nyx to get into range. Because this guy is dead if he's stunned. Like, if Nyx just walks around, and maybe he stuns him up here, a little bit further down the lane. But if Nyx gets the stun off, that's when you want to time your initiation with your blink. You don't want to go in first and give away that you're going for the team. Because you're giving away three or four seconds, two or, well, we'll say two seconds, before the stun actually happens that he's in danger. And so it gives his teammates two extra seconds to respond, and you're unlikely to kill him because Nyx isn't in range. Like, let your initiators go first and time your initiation with them. Nyx is unfortunately trying to stun, but he's running away. Wisp shows up, and at this point, I would back. The reason being, map is empty. They've been 5-manning almost the entire game. It's highly likely that they could be right behind here. There's still a tier 1. Really, really good chance that they're just going to TP in and kill you. And your blink is on cooldown. You've used your Manta like instantly. If I saw this as a storm, I would zip in. Now, you decide to blink for it, and you're still kind of okay at this point, but the instant Lena shows, you want to be turning around and running. Like, it's not worth getting a kill on Sniper. I mean, this is effectively an offlane Sniper. He is their three farm priority. You are the anti-mage, the only carry on your team, the one position. You do not want to be trading your life for this guy, and you're not even going to get him. Storm shows up. You take a bunch of damage, and again, blinking in aggressively to kill the sniper. Tide saves your butt with a really nice ravage. Like, your team is being forced to support you because you're choosing a bad fight. Tide gets a really nice ravage. You can blink away and save yourself, but you choose to go in and just die. And now your team is stuck here without their carry. Can't do anything. Tide dies. Nick's probably going to get picked off here. Invoker's the only one who gets away. Like, do you see how you're causing your team to die 
with your over aggressive plays. Now Nyx has to buy back because your buyback's on cooldown. I don't know if you're tilting at this point, but the game sort of feels like you're tilting. Like we have to fight now, we have to beat them now, and that's and that's not the play style I'd like to see from you. CM walks in, gets Yules. Like this is not the fighting scenario you want to be playing. Team defends the racks though, so good on them. They lose the top tower though. I know I'm being pretty critical of your decisions, but. Being good at anti-mage is knowing when to fight and why to fight. Like, that is his greatest strength, in that is he is extremely mobile and he will win the game simply by forcing you to fight whenever he wants to. And currently you're taking the fights on their terms. They have good 5-man, they sense that you're not farmed enough yet, and they want a 5-man and push down your towers, and you say no. I am going to split push you to death, you must gank me before you push. Like, that's the kind of mentality you want to be thinking. Instead, you're just playing right into the game plan that they want to play. And you got a lot of kills, right? But on Anti-Mage, deaths are far more important, and this is almost true of any core. Like, the time lost while dead that you could have been farming, as well as the gold that you lose, is so significant. Each one of these deaths probably cost you 1 to 2k net worth. Like, no joke. On a hero like Anti-Mage, 1 to 2k net worth. Nyx gets a nice pick on Storm. And like here, I know you want to go in, but you're not strong enough to fight like this. Right, you're going in. Ravage is on cooldown. Like, how is your team supposed to su supposed to support you? Like, you want to play around your team's cooldowns. Like, CM goes in trying to fight with you. It's a bad situation. We'll also talk about just this map positioning in general. When you're choosing to take a fight here, like. Yes, you're trying to ambush this hero right in the trees. His All four of their team was there, though. There was a flash on the screen where you could see him. So, like, and Storm was here as well. Like, you don't want to be fighting in a situation where your team can't do anything to support you, whereas they're all instantly there. Like, this is also kind of why you don't run up ramps to fight. You want them to run up your ramp. But most fights end up happening in kind of neutral spaces like this. So again, more fighting, they take your mid racks because you decided to fight. You know, and all the while, like, like their carry, their supports are getting a lot of farm, as well as their carry. Like, this is how you feed gold. See how, like, if you look at their net worth on their other team, see how, like, all of these heroes have really good net worth? The reason for that is because you keep dying, and the AoE gold is feeding them all gold. Like, I would argue their last hits are probably terrible. Like, look at these guys, 83, 58, 41, 25. Like, none of them are anywhere close to the amount of last hits that you have. But all of their net worths are skyrocketing, because every time you die, you're like a gold pinata. You give every single one of them 200, 300, 400 gold. And that's kind of the difficulty of playing the highest gold hero in the game, just like Alk died there. Probably fed like 2k gold. Again, we're trying to chase a storm spirit. This could be okay. Click on him, see how much mana he has. Instead of just blindly mana avoiding. It's likely to kill him because he jumped pretty far, but again, you want to be sure. You don't want to make these mana voids just to mana void. You're looking at this tower, looking to kill it again. Good understanding that the tower doesn't have backdoor regen. So you can just take that tower whenever you want. And again, like, now you've lost Elena Barracks, so we'll kind of assess the game. We've, we're, we're still doing okay. We have 15 kills. A lot of their heroes now have farm because you've died so many times as a team. But your team is fighting pretty well, I would say, as a team. They're just picking the wrong fights, and some of that's because they're feeling the need to support you. Uh, but they currently have a lot of scary heroes on their team. Sniper is starting to deal some good physical damage to you. Alk was always pretty scary. Storm is still scary with his Orchid. Lina is scary because of her Yules. So, like, there are four heroes that you're worried about dying to. 
and then there's Wisp, who's supporting them and making it difficult for you to kill targets. You're down one lane of Barracks, which at 32 minutes is manageable as an anti-mage, especially because you have the ability to push waves so quickly with your Vlads and your Battle Fury. But you really need to be carrying TPs around. Like, this hero is designed to take advantage of the fact that it can move, like, anti-mage can move around the map at a rate that's twice or three times the speed of a normal hero, and TP scrolls will only benefit you in your movement. Like Alina, for example, who didn't go blink, didn't go any mobility items. I guess you could argue Yules is a mobility item, but didn't go for those kinds of items, can match your movements on the map with a TP scroll. And you want to have a TP scroll as well, so that you can truly take advantage of the movement that is blink. Wisp shows up. I like that you back there just because you're scared of him, but just walk away. So instead of blinking away in that situation, I'd like to see you just start to walk away. And if you notice that nobody else shows up, just kill him. Good attempt trying to Manta dodge Lena's stun. He's obviously not alone. Here, micro your illusions. Like, your illusions are really annoying for them. You just send your illusion to start hitting this Lena, hitting this IO, they have to go back to base. Like, it's pretty easy too to micro illusions as well, because you can, like, you can have a select all other units key, uh, or you can uh, actually bind them to your own control group if you want to. But you just select all other units, or hit whatever key is bound to those units. You tap it twice, gives you vision of those units, then you click who you want to, then you instantly tap your hero, or tap the key that goes back to your hero. So for me, example, uh, my all of the units key is set to 3, so I just tap 3 twice, look at my illusions, right click the hero, tap 1, that's my hero key, and I just go back to that. Here you see Storm is Roshing, like, you can Manta right now and send your illusions in to just annoy them. I'm gonna try and steal it. Probably safer not to. But like, they're taking an objective right now, you want to be also taking an objective. Pushing top, pushing bottom, pushing their 2-3. Make them make the tough choices, right? They don't want to take Ro you don't want to give away Roche for free. You want to say, yeah, sure, take Roche, but I'm going to take your tier 3 top, or I'm going to take your top barracks, or something along those lines. Currently, you're giving away objectives for free as an anti-mage, and that's not how you want to play. You stack Ancients, it's okay. Ancients do not cooperate, so you do not stack Ancients. I wonder why that happened. That's weird. Why did that happen? Yeah, I don't know. Again, no TP in your inventory. So you're kind of forced to, you're tethered to your base by the fact that you don't have a TP. Like you want to be super far away right now and then you can join a fight in this in three seconds with a TP. And again, we talked about why I don't like BKB this game. Some bad camera work here. Misuse your Manta, you get your BKB delivered. BKB when you don't really need to. I guess it ended up mattering. You get away because of your BKB. So let's go back. Good mana void. Actually, we'll just keep watching until this fight ends. You go pick back in at half HP. This is good. Blinking to impassable land for them. You have to be careful that Sniper could just shrap and kill you. And then you blink in and die. Tide uses his Ravage, Storm buys back. They take top barracks and that's pretty much game. How long do you guys hold out? Not very long after this. Alright, we'll go back and look at this fight again. Alright, here's a situation where 
you're hearing all these, so this is the beginning of the fight, you're hearing all these spells being used down in the bottom lane, but you're not seeing anything. Like, you have no idea who's low, who's, like, you have an idea that Storm has used pull, he's used his remnant, and maybe he's jumped in a bit. Like, use your camera to look. Your hero is okay out here for right now. If Storm jumps you, you've got Manta to defensively go. Don't just sit here for four or five seconds not looking at the fight. Then you blink in. Your blink positioning isn't ideal, and you Manta instantly. The point of Mantaing instantly is to pick off a target that's either been stunned or you have a stun that locks them down, that kind of thing. But Manta, <coughs> while it is good as your offensive item, it's also your defensive item. And with a simple Lena nuke or stun, she kind of guesses correctly. You're now in a position where you're orchided, and you can't do much. Fortunately, you had BKB delivered, so you're able to get out of that situation. But you basically went in, used most of your cooldowns, and didn't get any right clicks off. Like, that's that's really, really bad as an anti-mage. Like, which I much rather would have seen. Like, in this time that your camera work isn't paying attention, Nyx runs in and dies. Like, you want to be going in with your Nyx. Time your movement to be with Nyx. Granted, I'm pretty sure he just walks into a sentry and dies. But even during that time, you could be hitting Storm, because Storm has committed himself to hitting the Nyx. Then, in terms of your items, like, I'd much rather see you just blink in and BKB instantly. Right? And then start hitting a hero. Especially if it had been that Storm. You can just blink in, BKB, you're hitting Storm. If Storm's committed himself to killing the Nyx, then maybe you Manta aggressively, and then you choose to fight. As it is, you have to use your BKB in a defensive way. Right? Like, they yulsed you, then they stunned you. Let's see. We'll watch this again. Like, you get yulsed, then Lena misses her stun, fortunately. Then you get orchided and nuked. Like, you can 100% avoid that situation where you get yulsed, which is 2-3 to three seconds of attacking, by simply just BKBing initially as you go in. Right? Tide was out of position, he couldn't come in and Ravage, then he forced to Ravage defensively, but you're not hitting anyone during his Ravage. This is really good. You pick off Storm here, and you continue to go in after this, after this IO. But again, Tunnel Vision, right? You've had Tunnel Vision a few times when it comes to this game. Mostly when you're trying to kill this Sniper and you just end up feeding your life away for it. But in this situation, it's Tunnel Vision for Io, right? He's retreated. He's in a very safe place. Hiku can't really contest him there. And by walking in right here at half HP, you're essentially aggroing the Lina and the Alk. And they're just going to come up and try to kill you. So I would have backed here, healed up after that. This was an okay blink. But if Sniper had if Sniper had Shrapnel, which he did not, you would have been dead. Io kind of tries to sift you out, and then here you blink in because you feel the need to fight. And like, I would much rather just see you blink to try and heal. You can win a game down two racks as an anti-mage. That's one of his greatest strengths. But you cannot win a game when you are dead and when, like, basically you can't win a game when you're dead. And I think a lot of it's just coming down to after you killed that storm, you decided to go in rather than back. Uh, so that's pretty much it for this game. Looks like you guys are going to lose. Um, overall, if I kind of had to sum up your replay, I think you had a pretty good laning stage, just like you said. You had a couple mistakes in the laning stage, but you got a lot of kills. Uh, you traded your life for Sniper early, which I kind of disagree with. And then in the mid game, a lot of people came to your lane, and instead of moving to a different lane and creating pressure elsewhere on the map, you chose to fight them as a hero that really isn't designed to fight in that 15 to 25 minute range. And by fighting them and dying a few times, you kind of fed away your net worth to them and made it a much more even game in terms of gold than it had to be. So I would have liked to have seen you play anti-mage in more of a farming capacity and then showing up late to the team fight. Be the late adopter, show up, man avoid a target, get out, start farming again. Until you're at a point where you're essentially unkillable. 
overall, I hope this was helpful for you. If you have any questions for me, uh, feel free to let me know. Um, if you feel like I was wrong on something or didn't cover something quite right or you want more explanation, just shoot me a message. Uh, that should be it. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.